Forecasters issue dire warning for 2025 hurricane season. Experts are raising alarms over what could be one of the most active hurricane seasons in recent memory. AccuWeather and other meteorologists are warning of conditions that mirror past years with widespread destruction. The 2025 Atlantic hurricane season is shaping up to be historic with predictions of high storm counts, intense wind speeds, and major landfalls. Today, we're taking a closer look into why forecasters are sounding the alarm, what makes this year different, and how communities along the Gulf and Atlantic coasts should prepare for what lies ahead. What forecasters are predicting for 2025. Forecasters are calling the 2025 Atlantic hurricane season one of the most threatening in recent history. According to AccuWeather, up to 30 named storms are possible this year. Of those, eight to 12 are expected to become hurricanes and four to seven may reach major hurricane strength with winds of 111 miles per hour or higher. The high numbers are already raising comparisons to the devastating 2020 season. The forecast is being driven by a combination of warm ocean temperatures, weak wind shear, and the likely formation of La Nina conditions. Meteorologists are closely watching the Atlantic Basin, where waters are currently warmer than usual, even for spring. These elevated sea surface temperatures are a key ingredient in hurricane development, providing the energy storms need to grow stronger and faster. Experts warn that rapid intensification could be a frequent feature this year. This happens when a storm quickly escalates from a tropical storm to a major hurricane within hours, giving residents less time to prepare. The presence of La Nina, which often reduces upper-level winds that can break apart developing storms, may allow more systems to flourish without interference. How 2025 compares to previous seasons. The forecast for 2025 is not just active, it's potentially historic. Meteorologists are already comparing this year's outlook to 2005 and 2020, two of the most destructive hurricane seasons on record. In 2005, Hurricane Katrina and several other major storms caused catastrophic damage across the Gulf Coast. In 2020, the season produced 30 named storms, exhausting the entire alphabet and forcing officials to turn to the Greek alphabet for additional names. AccuWeather's lead hurricane forecaster, Alex Da Silva, described this season's conditions as textbook for high activity. He noted that the warmth in the Atlantic and the expected shift toward La Nina by summer resemble the setup for past years that saw multiple U.S. landfalls. The biggest difference this time may be the consistency of warm water across nearly the entire Atlantic basin not just the Gulf or Caribbean. That increases the likelihood of more widespread storm formation and longer lasting systems. While every season carries risk, the 2025 outlook has prompted concern from emergency managers, especially in states like Florida, Texas, and Louisiana. These regions have seen repeated landfalls in recent years and may be especially vulnerable if the forecasts hold true. The combination of warm water, favorable atmospheric conditions, and a predicted early start to the season is making officials urge the public to prepare now. Why La Nina matters. La Nina plays a major role in shaping hurricane seasons. It refers to the cooling of sea surface temperatures in the central and eastern Pacific Ocean, but its effects stretch far beyond that region. During a La Nina phase, wind patterns shift across the tropics. One major result is reduced wind shear in the Atlantic, which creates a more favorable environment for hurricanes to form and strengthen. In years without much wind shear, storms can hold together longer and grow more intense. That's exactly what forecasters fear in 2025. As La Nina strengthens, it could lead to more long-lived hurricanes that develop early in the season and persist across the basin. The change in atmospheric conditions also often results in more frequent landfalls, especially along the Gulf Coast and southeastern United States. La Nina seasons have historically been dangerous. In both 2005 and 2020, two of the most active seasons on record, La Nina was in place, 
Scientists believe the same pattern this year could create a dangerous feedback loop, warm waters, low shear, and frequent storm development. This combination makes forecasting more complex and raises the risk of storms intensifying with little warning. Regions most at risk in 2025. With an active season expected and La Nina likely to influence storm paths, certain areas are facing higher than usual risk this year. Florida, the Gulf Coast, and the Carolinas are all under heightened threat for potential hurricane landfalls. AccuWeather warns that multiple U.S. landfalls are not only possible, but probable. The Gulf of Mexico is especially vulnerable. Water temperatures there are already above average, and the shallow waters allow storms to rapidly gain strength before hitting land. Texas and Louisiana have been hit repeatedly in recent years, and both states could be in line for more severe impacts this season. Florida is always a focus during hurricane season, and 2025 is no exception. Meteorologists are keeping a close eye on the eastern Atlantic, where storms can form early and travel the long route toward the state. The presence of La Nina often steers these systems westward, increasing the risk to the Florida Peninsula and Keys. The East Coast isn't safe either. While storms that curve northward can sometimes stay offshore, Warmer waters along the Atlantic seaboard this year mean those systems may stay strong longer. That raises concerns for coastal areas from Georgia to New York, where even a glancing blow could bring heavy rain, storm surge, and wind damage. Storm names and timeline expectations. The National Hurricane Center has already released the list of storm names for 2025. It includes names like Alberto, Beryl, Chris, Debbie, and Ernesto. If the forecast proves accurate, and the season does see 20 to 30 named storms. The full list could be exhausted once again. That hasn't happened since 2020, when forecasters had to use the Greek alphabet to name additional storms, a practice they've since replaced with a supplemental list. What's most alarming this year isn't just the number of storms, but how early the season may begin. Experts warn that tropical activity could start weeks ahead of the official June 1st opening. With sea temperatures already high in the Atlantic and Gulf, storms could form as early as May. Early season development usually happens near the Western Caribbean or Gulf of Mexico, both of which are already showing signs of warming above average. The season typically peaks around mid-August to late September, but with the current outlook, meteorologists say the entire summer and fall could stay active. Long-lasting storms may form farther east in the Atlantic and track across the basin. These systems tend to be stronger by the time they reach land, which is one reason why forecasters are urging people not to wait until mid-season to prepare. Emergency officials, brace for impact. Emergency managers across coastal states are treating the 2025 forecast with urgency. The high number of predicted storms, combined with the chance of rapid intensification, is creating concern among agencies responsible for disaster planning and response. Officials in Florida, Texas, Louisiana, and the Carolinas are reviewing evacuation routes, shelter capacities, and storm surge plans months in advance. In many communities, past hurricanes exposed weaknesses in infrastructure and response efforts. This year, there's a renewed push to fix those issues before the first storm arrives. Emergency planners are coordinating with local utility companies, hospitals, and transportation departments to improve resilience. The memory of recent storms like Ian, Ida, and Laura still lingers, and agencies are working to avoid repeat scenarios. One of the biggest challenges is communicating urgency without causing panic. Forecasters and public officials are stressing the importance of early preparation, particularly for older adults, those with medical needs, and families in low-lying or flood-prone areas. The National Hurricane Center is also expanding its messaging about storm surge risks and inland flooding, which have caused rising death tolls in recent years. Officials say the time to act is now, not when a storm is already on its way. The role of climate change in stronger hurricanes. Many scientists agree that climate change is a major factor in the rising intensity of hurricanes. Warmer oceans, rising sea levels, and shifts in atmospheric patterns all contribute to more damaging storms. The Atlantic Basin has seen a steady increase in sea surface temperatures over the past few decades. 
and 2025 is continuing that trend. Warmer water fuels stronger hurricanes and allows them to hold their strength longer, even after landfall. Another concern is rapid intensification, which is becoming more common. This happens when a storm's wind speed jumps by at least 35 miles per hour in just 24 hours. Climate researchers say that as water temperatures continue to rise, this phenomenon will likely become more frequent. That leaves less time for preparation, especially in communities that are used to having days, not hours, to get ready. Storms are also producing more rain. Warmer air holds more moisture, which leads to heavier rainfall and widespread flooding. In recent years, hurricanes like Harvey, Florence, and Ian dumped historic amounts of rain, causing long-lasting damage well beyond the coasts. With 2025 shaping up to be another wet season, the risk of inland flooding is high, even in areas far from the shore. Scientists are still studying the long-term effects, but the short-term warning is clear. As the climate warms, storms are growing more destructive. The 2025 season could be a preview of what future hurricane seasons might look like if global warming trends continue. How communities can prepare now. With an intense season on the horizon, officials and experts are urging communities to take steps early. Preparation doesn't have to wait until a storm forms. In fact, getting ready now could make the difference between safety and disaster. Families are being asked to review their evacuation plans and supply kits, including food, water, medications, flashlights, and important documents. Insurance policies should be checked and updated to make sure homes are covered for both wind and flood damage. Many people learn too late that standard policies don't include flood coverage, even in high-risk areas. Local governments are working to improve communication tools and early warning systems. Some counties are updating text alert systems, while others are using social media more aggressively to spread real-time updates. Emergency shelters are being reassessed for accessibility, particularly for older residents and those with disabilities. Education is another key part of early preparation. Schools, businesses, and community centers are holding preparedness workshops and sharing checklists to help residents understand what they'll need during and after a storm. Some cities are holding drills to test their readiness before hurricane season officially begins. Preparedness doesn't stop at the individual level. Cities and counties are investing in stormwater improvements, levee repairs, and floodgate systems to reduce the risk of widespread damage. These projects won't stop a hurricane, but they could lessen the long-term impact on homes, roads, and lives. Now it's time to hear from you. How will you prepare for the upcoming hurricane season? Let us know in the comments section below.